Okay, I guess I'll start. Welcome to Talks on Tuesday. And I'm here with uh, Julie Stone, Chelsea Richens, and our guests, Gino, Anka, Gordy, and Louis Therese. And we'll be here for about 30 minutes. And we talk every week about just different um, topics and ideas and things that are a little bit maybe esoteric or paranormal. And today we're doing uh, kind of an open mic. We thought it would be fun to just let, let everybody bring their own topics and we can chat about them for a, a little t bit of time and then maybe move on to somebody else's thoughts. Everybody's welcome to share or just watch if you don't want to participate. Either is fine. So um, I guess I'll start with asking, is there anybody who has something they'd like to talk about today? And you can either raise your hand or use the raise hand um, reaction uh, button that's at the bottom of the page, either way. But, okay, well, if no one's got anything to talk about, then I will ask a question. Last week we talked about the difference between gratitude and appreciation. And I was talking with Mary during the week and she'll join us a little bit later if she's available. She has had an appointment, but um, she was telling me how she's been thinking about it during the week and kind of noticing the difference between gratitude and appreciation. So I was wondering if anybody else was thinking about that. And, and if so, what did you notice? Go ahead, Jenna. Uh, I just recently have been um, kind of studying um, it's a um, a healing thing called Joe Ray. I don't know if you're familiar with it. And uh, I'm reading their book to re learn more about it. Very spiritual group uh, with healing and physical and emotional healing. A lot of things that Reconnective Healing does, but they add a lot more to what they're doing with the client and so forth. Uh, but in their, their teachings, it's all about... Um, you know, changing the world, making it a, a loving, wonderful, kind place, uh, elevating the collective consciousness. And in the book, they use that word gratitude so much. And I've always heard of gratitude that way as well. And to me, it's it's a more powerful word and feeling and expression than appreciation. It just, it's everywhere, if you want it to be. <clears throat> yeah, that's an interesting observation. Thanks. Uh, hi, Renee. Um, we're doing kind of an open mic this week. And so anybody can um, bring a topic if they'd like. And right now we're just talking about uh, reflections from, from last week's uh, share on, on gratitude versus appreciation. And Gina was sharing how he, he felt gratitude was a and and let me know if i'm not paraphrasing correctly you you feel that gratitude is a stronger emotion that it yeah has uh and i remember last week we were saying that and you were saying how you felt it very deep deep in your kind of core and yeah i agreed i felt that it was a a deeper kind of more heavier uh energy um I think appreciation, and I, I mentioned this, I think last week, that is more, um, unencumbered, I think gratitude is some is, is related to something. And I liked, uh, what Durin was saying, as far as ethos, you know, appreciation is kind of like in the ethos. It's, it's like free floating around and we mm -hmm. can tap into it at, at any time. So, uh, Anyway, yeah, any other thoughts on that or anything else? Chels, go ahead. Yeah. Um, on the difference between gratitude and appreciation, and I think that kind of fits that way of thinking, Gino, because that it feels stronger or seems more like a tool or, or um, because 
I think if we are putting the word appreciation as something more towards our being, which is closer to maybe peace and joy, I think when we speak of being really close to the, our essential being, which is peace and joy, I think that in a lot of ways, it's a neutral type of peace and a kind of neutral type of joy. And at least that's kind of how I interpret it. And that, you know, what we are really is in more of a neutral, non non black non white state hmm. and but i but um i think whatever it is to have that frequency close to being is something that i'm kind of thinking about on a regular basis going over in my mind which of course only clouds it because it's my mind. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but your awareness of it and, and your pondering of it, I think is, is helpful. And when I think of neutral and I, I agree with you, I think, I think of balance, you know, that being in balance, that's that kind of like zero spot or whatever they call it, you know, point zero or, you know, that totally balanced place. So, uh, yeah. 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 Interesting. I like that perspective. And it, it also kind of takes away the good and the bad, you know, the labels, mm -hmm. which I think is, is important. So, yeah. Hey, Louis Therese, did you want to share something? Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Go ahead. I would like to say appreciation is when you really appreciate of what you have and everything and realize what effort it had taken to achieve something or to have it or the goodness of that is coming your way. But gratitude for me is my daily existence. Uh, I have such a lot of gratitude. And with that, uh, it lifts my whole life up, my whole outlook on into and onto the world. Uh, I guess uh, you, uh, I have made that decision to be, have a lot of gratitude in my life. Because if I just look around, you know, there's a saying, don't look up, look down. And uh, especially if I look around me, I can see I'm in such a much better position and uh, everything. And also, with gratitude, you enjoy nature around you. You see the beauty of nature. And with that, there becomes an interaction. And if you gratitude, you're positive and it started stimulating the people around you and by respond to it. Uh, 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 whereas appreciation is a more serious, uh, 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 a serious um feeling whereas gratitude is it is up in the air it is vibration it is just great and good and you want to share it and if you don't want it so be it it's for <laughs> the next one that's that's my attitude about gratitude <laughs> and i love your little poem your attitude about gratitude that's so sweet yeah <laughs> yeah Good. Thanks for sharing that. You know, that's I, I love these different perspectives. Go ahead, Gina. But uh, just to say, Louis Therese, that was so beautifully said. I could feel how you feel about it. And I want you to know that's how I feel about it, too. It, I just beautifully said. Thank you. Nice. Uh, um, I think gratitude and appreciation. I'm thinking, what do they have in common? They both probably have in common that we are living within a gift that, you know, everything really is a, a gift that, you know, we encounter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I like that. Me too. And, and when I was watching the replay from last week, towards the end, Chelsea, you were talking about 
vibrations and high vibrations and words, you know, and where the words kind of fit and along that. I was at the time I was kind of envisioning almost like a music scale. And I, I couldn't really think of what to say that would, you know, I was thinking the word joy, you know, might go in there. Um, but I think, you know, you, you're, you talked, you mentioned a few words just now that um, also I think would fit in that higher vibration and, and that feeling of just getting close to the core self. And, um, you know, so, so, um, you know, I like that and I like, what it brings to our lives, you know, our, our day-to-day lives as far as this, you know, the remembering, the, the reminder or, or, you know, opening our awareness to feel gratitude, you know, to be appreciative, to just enjoy, you know, and I keep going back to Solomon. It's like, we're here to enjoy. <laughs> and, uh, it's like, why not? Uh, hmm. And this morning, oh, Anka, go ahead. I was just actually going to bring up the comment or the topic that you suggested, but feel free to talk about anything you'd like. Yes, I want I want to say about uh, the comments. Um, what about to discuss today about uh, things that we love most in this world? So things that we and love most in this even, world. Even scholars, I don't know. What do you love, people? Do you want to start? No. <laughs> I want to listen. <laughs> I, I love people, I think, because they give me good emotions and I love colors too because uh, I paint sometimes um, I love to walk on the streets of Bucharest or other cities to travel I like I discovered this uh, recently because I was uh, in Austria and in Holland, uh, Netherlands, um, and in Italy, and I don't know. I like uh, special events when uh, it's ha- people it's happy like. Uh, uh, when they marry and things that like this, um, I don't know. I like uh, happiness on the people. That's all, I think. <laughs> all I remember. And that was actually a pretty good range. Yeah. And and I think I can relate to a lot of that too, you know, and I like how you mentioned colors, you know, I think a lot of what you talked about were events, but I like how you mentioned colors because that's something that, that we, you know, our senses are in play, I think. And, and uh, yeah, I, I love that. Uh, it makes me think of the colors that we really don't know about that, that I would love to see. You know how you, we talk about that sometimes. There's colors that sometimes I haven't, but you hear people say, oh, I saw these, excuse me, <laughs> colors that were just so amazing. Yeah. Because we see, we see the colors. And uh, I remember something that I liked in the past when I was a little at five years old. When I see red on a, a sherry, and uh, my father said to me something, and I say, "What beautiful is this color?" That's nice. It's nice that you were able to appreciate that. And that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Gino, you look like you had something to say. Yeah, uh, it's, I just have something to say, but just something based on colors. Uh, you know, we have the 
the colors of the visible spectrum. You know, Roy G. Biv. Uh, red, was it red, orange, yellow, blue, indigo, and violet? Yeah. But I mean, you, I mean, we've all had the experience where we've seen a color and we could say, oh, okay, yeah, that's light purple or whatever. But there are sometimes you'll see a color and you can't nail it. You don't know what that color is. Hmm. It's, it's maddening. You should be able to know. But it's like, is it from outer space? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, something I love, um, <clears throat> I love music. Uh, it's, it is the international language. Uh, I can't say I like every kind of music, but I like most kinds of music, international and national and so forth. Uh, and recently, um, I decided um, I also record music. I'm a vocalist and my current computer uh, is not up to the task. It's not doing well. So I decided to spring for a really, really good computer. I want my money back because I don't want to spend the money. But anyway, I got it in the mail <laughs> last night. I waited patiently for the delivery for five days. And uh, in the meantime, I decided I'm going to set up a studio in my bedroom yeah. because it's much smaller and you need a smaller space so that the sound is better. And boy, my bedroom looks fantastic. I got rid of so much stuff. <laughs> I'm so excited. Um, I think tomorrow I'll begin really working with the computer and everything. And I can't wait to see, you know, will my sound be better? Will my vocals be better? You know, and share that music. I have my own YouTube channel and, uh, you know, I have a friend I'm working on, uh, I'm working with uh, on a project and, um, yeah, so it's very exciting. But music, I mean, everybody's experienced music and how it can move them. You know, everybody can be taken back in time by just hearing a song that they remember oh, yeah. and relate to it. You know, oh, that's the time I dated that girl when I was 13 or whatever, you know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's great stuff. <laughs> yeah, I agree with you, Gino, because music for me too is get, there's certain eras of music and it it can put me it can it's more sometimes it's more of a just it's like a feeling of how I felt at that time you know what I mean mm -hmm. and um uh I can get so much joy out of a, a song that comes on I go oh well, yeah and you know and and I and I I'm usually in my car when that happens most of the time, unless I put music on in the house, which I do every now and then. Um, <clears throat> but I was thinking aside from that, what I, what I love um, is uh, I love dance mm. and I love, I love the movement. So I love to see like artwork that has movement in it already. So I have many, um, uh pieces of of like um um i can't think of the word sculptures not sculptures but figures in a dance movement you know for example <laughs> that's just <laughs> one little one i mean i have them all over the place and even when i dream sometimes i i will dream that i am in the air and I'm doing just like these beautiful movements, you know? So that's why I love uh, the art when I can see the movement in it. And I love clouds and, and of course nature, you know, being out there in nature. And I love my dogs and my cats, you know? I mean, honestly, sometimes more than people and, <laughs> I have to admit um and um I guess for right now I mean that's that's what was coming to me as I was thinking about what I love because there's times when I'm talking or I see something I go oh I love that you know you know you just say that and then I go oh I never thought about that that if you know that I love that but I do I can't think of one now, but I probably later go, oh, yeah, I, I also love, you know, <laughs> so. You, oh, go ahead, Louis Trace. 
Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, Julie, why yes. don't you start doing ballroom dancing? It is so <laughs> wonderful to waltz and to do the tango and to do a rumba. It is so amazing. And the one that I think you will love the most is uh, salsa. the vinny. Is oh, what? It's essential. But I mean, uh, you love twirling and things moving. So uh, just imagine the Venus Vols. But now I also wanted to go and uh, say something to Gina. I am just as excited as you are. I have waited nine years for this opportunity. I'm also going to receive something to do with music. It's a synthesizer that you connect it to plants and the stress levels in the plant or interaction of the plant play through and that makes music. Oh. Hmm. So, yeah. cool. And uh, <laughs> I have really waited nine years for it. And uh, we are also going down to Cape Town, we're having a great a seminar with uh, Dr. Hertog, uh, but the one uh, of a uh, reconnection, uh, you know, that is in his book. And and they are also going, uh, we are going to have a sound bath with crystals and uh, sound of the plant music. Hmm. And uh, so, yeah, that is I am just as excited as you are. And perhaps one of the evenings I can say, wait, let me quickly connect this one and let it let you people hear. <laughs> <laughs> so I hope it's going to turn out quite good. I'm sure yeah, that sounds fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah. So now yeah. you let me let me see if I'm following you. You have you're getting a device that you somehow attach to the plant. And the plant emits a vibration that, that then turns into music. Is that? Wow. Oh, yes. my gosh. Or it sounds and, like music. Yeah. yeah. And also, the one professor in uh, Japan, his wife, had uh, diligently waited and talked to the plant. And then the plant had started to respond back to her. And they had the way of communication, yes, is this, and no, is that, or things wow. like that. Uh -huh. And uh, so, yeah, I am very, very looking forward to it. But yeah, it is, it is all about the different stress levels that that synthesizer is uh, switching over into sound, as you say, uh, Julie. But I think also it picks up the sound of the surrounding uh, and, and the feeling of the people because uh, when I saw it the first time at the Dr. Hertog's uh, seminar in um, Johannesburg, uh, but uh, uh, it, it could pick up the mood of the uh, uh, seminar people. When they were laughing, the thing was going more happy and thing, and when it was serious, it was more down and things. So I really feel it's going to be up in a new different field for me. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Sounds fascinating. Oh, yeah, yeah that sounds and fantastic. Me and me and my plants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Louis Therese, have you ever read a book called Thus Spoke the Plant? Thus Spoke, Thus the, spoke plant. the Plant. Yeah. No. By Monica and Gagliano. It's a fascinating book. She did, did some research, like you're talking about, and she mentally connected with some plants and and uh i'll put it in the chat you'd love yeah. that book it's so fascinating yeah but it talks about plant communication wow. when i was growing up my mom had a lot of plants and they she had a really green thumb but she had this one azalea that never bloomed and after i don't know three or four years my dad said to her just off the cuff one day that thing doesn't bloom this year we're getting rid of it and wouldn't you know <laughs> it's the first it time. It the first time. <laughs> yeah. My dad was stunned. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. No, definitely. I will appreciate it because, uh, you know, uh, I, I would like to introduce the people more to the different side of, of 
of the plant world, and especially trees, because I remember when I had my first experience when a tree were communicating with me, I was blown out of my mind. I could not believe it, you know, and uh, then I tried to let him talk to me again, and it never happens. You have to be really tranquil and not expecting and to be calm and peaceful. And then it is the interaction of flow. And so, yeah, I, I would love that book, to read that book. Please, Barbara. Mm. Yes, I'm going to mute myself and then I'll type it in the chat. And then for all of you who are watching on YouTube, I'll put it also in the... Um, under the description so but it's it's a fascinating uh, examination of her research on plants and, commu and plant communication and how um they have a consciousness you <laughs> their, their consciousness is is uh... a very interesting point that i have learned from my native american friends is you know the totem pole when uh, they go into the uh, bush to go and cut down a totem pole it must be a, a totem very... pole yeah sorry my english eh? <laughs> is very delicious <laughs> anyway <laughs> they go and select one and then they don't talk there in front of it they go away and by at their home or at the tipi they decided which one and then they all come together and they scream and make sounds and make a, a, a great fuss. You be a big, 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 big uh, noise and everything. Then that tree gets so frightened that it kind of go into a, a coma. And that is the time they quickly cut it down to a harm, not to harm the tree too much. Yeah. And uh, that uh, is very interesting, you know. Yeah. Yes, yes, communicating with uh, with plants is, is very interesting. When we go over to central Oregon, which is high desert country, um, and my understanding is it's similar to uh, like around Johannesburg and some of that uh, mm -hmm. area. It, um, and and I they have juniper trees and sometimes I would want to cut some branches from the juniper trees for this and that and I would just sit in front of one and just yeah ask it and kind of be open to you know which which branch should I take you know is it okay if I take one and which one you. and they always kind of just direct me to you know <laughs> which one which one is okay uh, and they I believe oh they don't consider it really a sacrifice as far as what we think of as a sacrifice. They consider it like a gift, you know, they're, they're, they give it willingly. And, and uh, so, yeah. But go ahead. What were you going to say? I think we should continue this plant conversation on another day. I, uh, I've been playing around recently, like over the last, since the, maybe the, since maybe about May, I I uh, started collecting a few plants, and so I had maybe about three, and now I have twenty four. Oh my god! <laughs> but I've been playing. I've been playing with them, and I found this app called Flora, where you can um, name them and take their picture and uh, keep track of them and stuff. And um, but. <laughs> You know, one of them, which kind of was one of my favorite new plants, died. And I I just don't know why my favorite new plant died, you know? And he didn't die all the way. He wasn't 100% crispy, but it got to the point where I had to throw him away. And it was a he? Yeah, <laughs> it was a he. I, had, we, he. I named him Redbone. Good name. But, um, but I would also kind of like in the same topic of what I love, I was, I've been dressing up my plants in like vintage pots and uh, all kind of all about their style. 
<laughs> and you know kind of doing stuff like um scouring the antique malls for my new favorite thing is crystal ash ashtrays from 1970 they make a good saucer <laughs> but i oh. was just thinking when louis therese was talking i wonder if my plants like that i that i am conscious of how they look in their pot and stuff <laughs> i wonder if plants hair what they're wearing you know <laughs> uh, are these plants that are indoors or outdoors or both what indoors like All i'm looking indoors. over at most of them right over oh, there okay right 24 wow yeah, yeah. that's a lot but, I, 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 but a lot of them are very happy and you know that one of the originals that was like i was down to like three it was a christmas cactus and I, I, I have to admit, I have abandoned plants in the Lowe's parking lot when Why? I feel like, like to find them a new owner. Oh, okay, okay, yeah, <laughs> okay. Wow. And I almost got to the point where this plant just didn't seem happy, and I almost <laughs> abandoned them. But I got him a new pot, and then I got him like twenty four, well, twenty one other siblings, and he's happy now. Oh, cool. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> I love hearing that too, Chelsea, because I used to have a lot of plants, but then as Dusty grew, he would eat them and attack them and then throw up. And so <laughs> unfortunately now we have limited amount of plants inside and they're all hanging and he still tries to jump up to them. <laughs> but I, I really miss having a lot of plants. And that's one of the things that when he steps over the rainbow bridge, it's like, oh good, I'll get some more indoor plants. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I miss that. So, but yeah, I think it'd be great to continue on with. There's so much about plants and plant cautiousness we can continue on with. And Anka, I saw you put in the chat you'd like to continue on also with things that we love, which kind of brought this conversation up. So, um, yeah, that that sounds good. A lot of things to talk about in the future. Right now, it's time for us to to close though. So, uh, thanks everybody for being here today and joining in, and. Uh, We'll see you next week. So I'm going to turn the recording off. Have a good week, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.